events that happened that was prophesied in the book of Daniel and uh, Yeshua then quoted in, out of Daniel and said it's also for the future when they asked him about the end which means that it's prophetic what happened in the story of Hanukkah is prophetic for the end for all of us so it's important for all of us to know the prophetic meaning of Hanukkah and, and what it's preparing us for at the end because all of us are here at the end we're here for the end so we need to know our purpose and and that's kind of like what we're going to be talking about those two weeks from Sunday in the evening at six o'clock okay on December 2nd okay and and Hanukkah is actually eight days long but uh, we'll only be celebrating that here Sunday evening and then we'll be doing something the following weekend at, at the house but here for for here it's going to be the opening night will be December 2nd okay um, also we have a, a, a play that you can give if you want to the ministry um, I will do it and start it I'll bend the meme and sure Lord I just ask the Lord that this teaching would, would be conveyed the way you want it to be conveyed and come across to every heart of it, to every soul, and be transformative of it in the name of Yeshua. Okay, uh, let's look at Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. We're in a portion called Vayetse. Did everybody, I, I, I don't know, did everybody get a copy? Okay, uh, I, I didn't know if I had enough. Okay. Did everybody, was there enough for everybody to have one, or is this for a few people to share it? <laughs> okay. It's up there for those of you who didn't have it to get one. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, by yet comes from Yatsa, which means to go out, to come out, to go forth. Okay, so Genesis 28 10. We have never stopped loving to praise and worship the Lord. Okay, that's why we praise and worship so long. Okay, and I have a vision that one of these days we're going to be in such presence of the Lord and the glory of the Lord that we're not going to be able to stop. And then God will say, "Okay, now give a word." It'll be like the Holy Spirit saying, "Now give a word," and then we'll finish the word and we'll go back to worship because it's going to be that intense. That's what heaven is like, and heaven is going to come down to earth. That's the vision I have. Okay, uh, 28 verse 10. And Yaakov departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. He took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. So let me read a couple more verses. He had a dream and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord, Yehovah, stood above it and said, I am Yehovah, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Yitzchak, the land on which you lie. I will give it to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will also be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west, to the east, and to the north. And to the south, and in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. And Yaakov awoke from his, his sleep and said, Surely Yehovah is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Yaakov rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on it on top of it. And he called the name of that place Beth El, that means house of God. However, previously the name of the city was called, had been called Luz. Then Yaakov made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me on the journey that I take, and will give me food to eat and garments to wear, and I return to my father's house in safety, then Yehovah will be my God. This stone which I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, 
and of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Okay. Um, there is so much in here. Okay. Why did Yaakov go to this place in the first place? Huh? Yeah, he was he was running, but you gotta understand everything was passed down generation to generation. First Abraham, and then Abraham passed it down to Yitzchak. Okay, and that's how you say this. And everybody likes to say Isaac, but it's Yitzchak. Yitzchak. <laughs> See, it makes you want to laugh because actually that means laughter. Okay, but actually it's Yitzchak. Okay, and he brought it down to his son. Now, here's what's something very interesting. Abraham, God told Abraham uh, a few weeks ago, bring your son, your only son, to the mountain that I will show you and offer him there. And he went and he brought his son Yitzchak, 37 years old. He wasn't a little kid like they do in all the movies. Okay, He was 37 years old. And he, and I mean, how many of you are around 37? Yeah, there's one. Let me take Yeah, Josh is 35, right? Yeah. Okay, so Josh is two years old. 37 years old, and he was obedient to his father to the point of death. Okay? And he was up there, and instead of him, uh, God provided a ram that was caught by its horns in a crown of thorns. Okay? Like Messiah, the crown of thorns. We shared about this. It's, it's the... It is what I would call the um, foundation of Judaism. It's called the Akedah, the binding of Isaac. Okay, And in that whole binding of Isaac is the whole story of Yeshua. Remember when Yeshua said to uh, the, uh, the people that were challenging him? He, he said, they, they said, how do you know? You know, he, he said that before Abraham was, he said, I am. Okay, and he said, you're, you're not, you're barely, you know, I, I don't remember what AJ said he was, but like maybe they said you're barely like 50 or, or not even that. I think they said something like you're barely a certain age and yet you've seen, you know, that, that Abraham saw you and they were mocking him. But he said, before Abraham, before Abraham was I am. Okay, meaning he was saying, I was the I am before Abraham. And Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He rejoiced and was glad. Well, this is the day that he saw. The day when Abraham brought up his son. That that Abraham, it says, looked up and he saw. He saw Yeshua carrying the cross in the future. He saw the Son of God carrying the cross, so he placed the wood on his son to carry it. Because of the same thing. Yes. John chapter 8. Okay, yeah, John chapter 8. Okay, so I don't want to focus on that. But they went up to this mountain, Mount Moriah. So Isaac did not come back with his father Abraham because Isaac was having a spiritual experience on that same mountain at the time. So don't you think that everybody kept passing along this event to their children? This incredible thing happened on this mountain. So... You know, ja Yaakov is running from his brother because his brother, Esau, Esau, Rome, threatened to kill him. So there he is. His mother, uh, Rivka, tells him, you know, you better go and go to my brother. Okay, and he starts heading to the place where his family is. And on the way, he stops by and he, he, he heard about this mountain this Mount Moriah, and he said, I want to see if I'll have an experience. But I'll just go there, and I'll rest there, and I'll go on my way from there. Well, he does have an experience at this mountain. Because this is going to be the mountain where both temples are going to be. Temple is a, is a, a shadow, a picture of the house of God. Okay, and the ladder going up. Did you know that in the temple, there were spiral ladders there was, I think, two or three on each side. I think it was two on each side. And it was three levels, like the three heavens, okay? And as you got higher, the, the ladders became, you know, it got a little bit larger. And each level was a little bit larger, okay? 
It's like you're getting higher and higher and higher and closer to the Lord when you go up these ladders. And here he has uh, this, this experience of a ladder to heaven. And the promises from the Lord are brought down to him. Okay, so, so, so here's the thing. Are we at the right place? It says he went, he came upon a, a makom, a standing place. The, the word makom, uh, on, on page two of your notes, the top of page two, uh, the word makom means standing place. Uh, if the, you look up the root word, uh, it's kum. Remember when Yeshua said, rise up little girl when she died? When mm -hmm. she came outside? Takum, talita ta, kumi. Talita kumi. Rise up little girl. This is the Hebrew word. Kum, to rise up, to stand. Okay. So so here here is is what was happening. Okay. So he was he was there. Now I'm pretty much like going from memory on this, okay? But basically, the there's a reiteration of the promise of Abraham. See, the promises got passed down from son to son, because this is the beginning. Okay, but it's like the promises are for you and me. Because it says that the promise went to to the seed, to one seed, to Yeshua. And through Yeshua are we blessed. Through his blood being upon our hearts, are we do we receive the blessing, the inheritance, the covenants of God? We are following the same covenant that Yaakov followed. Except this is the beginning. We are following the same covenant and promises. What what did we read? He said in verse 15 of chapter 28 of Genesis, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done everything that I have promised you. God has promises in your life. You be the Messiah, you have promises in your life. And he will fulfill it and he will be with you. As long as you keep relying on him and trusting in him, he will always be with you. Okay, and he will be where, wherever you go and whatever you do. That is, that is, if you do things, you know, not in the flesh, and not, you know, if you're doing things by the Spirit. He doesn't go where there's sin. Okay, so, um, but he will go with you when you repent. He will be with you. Okay, so he said that he awoke from his sleep. And, and what is the, by the way, what is the promised land for you? Okay, it's not Israel. That's the promise for Jews. The promised land is the new Jerusalem. The promised land is the new heavens and a new earth. Because Abraham, it says, was not, was not looking for uh, a land. He was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. There is no city whose builder and maker was God it, it, on earth. But the one on earth is a type and shadow of the one in the heavens. Okay, so, uh, you know, I, I just want you guys to see that you have the same promises. Okay, and so it says here, ya Yaakov awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. How many times do we walk around and we're, and we're doing stuff, and we don't even realize that God is right there with us? All of us who believe, did not Yeshua said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you even to the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And yet, we go about and we don't realize he's right there with us. He's right there inside of us. He's right there with us. And we start doing stuff that we shouldn't be doing and we grieve him. I'm not guilty too. We, we grieve the, the Spirit. We grieve the Lord. He's right there with us. He's always with us. If we understood that, Maybe we would live differently. Maybe if we saw him and his angels around us, would we live differently? Absolutely. Yeah. If you, everywhere you go, you, you, you went, you saw angels around you, would you go ahead and sin? No, it's like, there's a holiness about that. 
But because we're not seeing with our spiritual eyes and we're looking with our physical eyes, we're, we're, we miss the mark. <laughs> but we can always repent. Thank goodness we can repent. But the thing is, he wants us to walk by faith, not by sight. Remember Thomas? He, he said, unless I see the, the, the holes in his hand, and I see the from the spear in his side, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't believe in the resurrection. And then he appeared and, and, and he and he said, Here, come on, feel feel the, the hole, feel the hole in my hand. Okay. Blessed are all who don't see and believe. Faith comes from believing what you don't see. So but the thing is, it's like this is the same for for Yaakov. He says, it says here, he awoke and he didn't realize that the Lord was right there. It's the same thing. He didn't know it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. So Yaakov rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on it. Have you ever wondered why he did that? Yes. Okay, well, he blessed it. Well, that's that's what we might think. Yes, he blessed, but it was more than that. Okay, uh, I think I, I don't have the word study in here, but um, well, let me put it like this. Okay, he the word for rock, the rock that he was sleeping on. As a pillow, it isn't my pillow like in the advertisements. Okay, it was pretty hard, <laughs> hard rock. Okay, and he was and he was lying down, and the word for rock is Evan. Oh, it is in the notes. What page? <laughs> I thought I didn't have it in the notes. Okay. Uh, I guess page two in the middle. Page two in the middle. Thank you. I don't even know my own notes. Here we go. All right, thank you. Uh, Evan, you see that word there? An olive, a bed, and a noon. If you take the olive and the bed, av is a word for father. If you take the bed and the noon, it's the word for son. In other words, this word for rock or stone means the father and the son. So he, his head was 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 upon the father and the son okay so what does he do he takes the rock and he pours oil on it you know what the word uh, he anoints it you know what the word for anointing is messiah messiah he anoints the stone the messiah he said this is the messiah the messiah is the king at this place the place that will have the temple of the Lord. So this is the Messiah the, 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 that is a witness. I, I leaned on him. I slept on him. He was there. You got something to say? Yeah. I always had a trouble with like defining anointing. So like, could anointing be like um, when Messiah gives you grace to do something? Uh, I, we'll get to that at a later time. Okay. Um, but basically, uh, when you anoint something, it is for leadership. In, in ancient times, in the time of the kings of Israel, they would anoint a king with oil because he was about to be king of the whole nation. And they, so, uh, Saul was anointed, and then <coughs> King David was anointed. And even Aaron was anointed okay, mm -hmm. to be leader of the, of the priesthood, of the Kohanim. Okay, so, yes. I have a question. Um, I know that there was a certain formula that the Lord gave to anoint the, the places and the... Yeah, well, we, I don't want to talk about the details of the anointing again. Well, I, 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 listen, I yeah. I appreciate your questions, but I think we're going to hold off some of these until I finish the, the teaching. I appreciate the questions, though. But, but if, if they're not if they're not like something that you want to share that you're getting or something like that in particular, okay. and you have a question about anything, let's just wait to the end for that. Okay. Uh, all right. So the anointing it represents being anointed for 
a, a job. And this basically is like, it's anointing for kingship here. That's what we're talking about. He was anointing the rock as saying, this is the king. This is the place of the king, the house of the king. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's, he's, he's saying that. He's acknowledging that God is king. He's king of this place. Okay, so it also means that, you know, something is going to happen at this mountain. And one day at this, at this mountain, there's going to be a temple. And there was two temples at that place. And then after that, in the future, there's going to be another temple on that same mountain. Let me put it this way. When the day of the Lord comes, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to be destruction over the whole earth. Certain places will be protected, but most places will be destroyed. And God is going to change the whole landscape of Israel. And, and he's going to change the landscape of Jerusalem. And Mount Moriah, according to the scriptures, is going to be the highest mountain in the whole earth. So he's going to, right now it's not the highest mountain. It's a very small mountain. Okay, but he's going to raise it up and raise it up. And it's going to be a huge mountain. That's going to be the highest mountain on the earth. And it's going to be flattened out. And so that a million and a half people are going to be able to fit there. So when we go up to, to the feast of the day of the Lord, we're all going to be able to go and be there at the house of the Lord and at the mountain of the Lord worshiping him. The glory of the Lord will appear in a cloud by day and a fire by night. There will never be darkness in Jerusalem for a thousand years. God's glory will be over the city. It will never depart. Okay, and that's what the scriptures say. That's what it says in Zechariah. It says, even at nighttime, it will be light. Okay, so, you know, these are going to be exciting days. God will make his abode on earth. He's been in heaven, in the third heavens. But he's going to make his abode on a new earth, and it won't yet be the new heavens and the new earth, but it will be a different earth than it is now. Because it's going to go through upheaval. It's going to go through transformation. The time of the wrath of God is going to be so destructive, but it's also, I, I hate using uh, a scientific word, it's going to be terraformed to the kingdom. You know what terraf terraform is? It means it's going to be made into, it's going to be changed. The landscape of the whole earth is going to be changed to look like the kingdom of God on earth. Because it's going to be the kingdom of God on earth. But the trouble and all the disasters and the fire and everything is going to be for a little bit, and I say a very little bit, at least for the Great Tribulation, and maybe a little bit after, just a few days after, it's going to be on fire. <laughs> Every mountain is going to go off like a volcano. Every valley will come up. Every mountain will be leveled. It's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be horrendous on the whole planet. Okay, so But... It's only to bring about God's kingdom. It says in Daniel, a rock is cut out without hands. And it's, it comes down and it smashes the ten toes. That's a ten nation government. It's going to be on the earth under the false Messiah. It's going to smash it. His kingdom is going to fill the whole earth. Okay, It's going to fill up at least one area. I think it's going to be like one huge landmass divided into nations. But that's just my opinion. Okay. I don't think there's going to be seas like we have today. I think there will be seas on the outskirts around and rivers that go into those seas because the Bible tells us that there is. Okay, Big rivers that go into seas on each side. Okay, But I believe that, that the land masses are going to be closer. There will be huge seas and huge divisions of nations like there, there are now. Okay. Alright, so, so I want to share with you about the Evan, the rock. Okay, it's the Father and it's the Son. Okay, um, now the Jews teach that that uh, Yaakov, before he um, went to his mother's, or how would you say his mother's uh, brother's house? His uncle. Okay, thank you. Before he went to his uncle's house, he spent 14 years in a training area that there was a school of Shem and Eber. Eber was a, Eber is where we get the word Hebrew from. He was the father of the Hebrews. Shem, you know Shem, Ham, and Yafet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the sons of Noah. Shem was still alive. 
Okay, so he was, they had a school, and Yannicko went to the school for 14 years, and he learned a lot. That, that's questionable. We don't know that for sure. That's rabbinic opinion. There was a school like this that existed, but, you know, it's, you know, they say that he was there for a period of time. And that they say that because of the age that Yaakov was. Okay, but that's a whole other story. So, uh, you know, all this is, is you know, he, he ends up going through such troubles, Yaakov. And he ends up, he ends up, um, after the dream and the ladder, let's go to to page five of your notes. Remember he made a, he, he he said this in, in chapter 28. He made six vows. If okay, if God will be with me and he will guard me on the way that I am going and he will give me bread to eat and clothes to wear, I will return in peace to the house of my father and Yehovah will be to me God. Okay, this is this is what I see. This is what he's saying, but this is what God sees. If God will be with me, and that means a relationship, an intimate relationship with the Lord, right? And he will guard me in the way I am going, keep watch over me, teach me his ways, that I might learn his word, that he gives me bread to eat, that I, I eat of his word, that is a bread from heaven. He gives me clothes to wear that he covers me. He gives me salvation. He gives me safety. And I return to this place. I will have peace that passes all understanding. And Jehovah will be my God. He will always be with me. And only him will I worship. This is a pattern for us to learn to live. Intimacy, having a relationship with the Lord. Trusting that he's watching over us and teaching us his ways, his times, his seasons. And that we are going to eat of his word, study his word, and that he's going to cover us with his salvation, and he's going to give us a peace from within, and we will only worship him. That sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? See, when Yaakov said this, that's what he was really meaning. This is a relationship with the Lord, and that's what the way God saw it. Okay, so... So this is a promise every Israeli, which includes every Jew, was to keep forever. This is a promise every believer, Jew or Gentile, was and is to keep to be a part of Israel. Guess what? According to, uh, according to Romans 11, when you all believed, you became grafted in to Israel. You're a part of spiritual Israel. So that means that promise is for you. But guess what? There are six ifs, but they're not ifs to us. When we believe in Messiah, we are already saying these we're going to do this. Okay, so that means we're going to have intimacy with the Lord. Okay, if you have a problem with intimacy with the Lord, then you're missing this. You're missing it. Okay, he says here that he's going to teach me his ways, watch over me. Okay, that, that, that you're going to learn the ways of the Lord. You're going to pursue him to learn everything about him. You're going to spend time in the Word, which is the bread from heaven, bread to eat. That you're going to trust that He is always covering you. He, Yeshua, is your salvation. Always trust in Him. And you're going to let Him fill you with His peace. And no matter what happens around you, you're going to have peace. Or you're going to choose to be at peace. And then the final one is, He will always be my God. And only him I will worship. Now that's hard, the hardest of them all. Because there's all sorts of things out there that distract us. But God is calling us to say, hey, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we got we, we choose to do it. And that's all of it. Not the parts we like, but all of it. Okay, so, and that is going to help us to stand. That is going to help us to become... Become like him. Okay, it says here, this is the stone. Uh, this is what, what Yaakov said. Um, he called the name of that place Beth El, verse 19. 
However, previously it was called Luz, and he made this vow. Who is he making a vow to? A rock that's anointed. It's a vow to Messiah. Before he even came, he called the rock Messiah. Now there was a rock that traveled with Israel in the wilderness. That was called the Messiah. According to the, the New Testament, I think it's in Hebrews, the rock that followed Israel in the wilderness was the Messiah. He literally comes out and said, was the Messiah, is the Messiah. It was a rock that traveled with Israel in the wilderness. Let me see if I can find the scripture for it. I think it's in here. Okay, it may not be in here. Josh, if you could find that one. Oh, the rock that traveled with them? Yeah. Isn't that uh, Hebrews? Yeah, it's in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3. Okay, so... Today, we're talking about stones, okay? Now, believe it or not, that's that old <laughs> song by, uh, what's his name, Dylan, Bob Dylan, okay? When he said everybody must get stoned, he was not talking about doing drugs, okay? The, and when really? you find out what it actually means, you basically, it, it's pretty much insulting and attacking him is what they were saying, everybody must get stoned, but there's a reason he said it like that, because we have to be humble. Okay, yeah, you, even Yeshua said, it's better that you fall on the rock rather than the rock falls on you. It was Merle Haggard. How was, huh? It was Merle Haggard. Uh, I'm sorry, Merle Haggard wrote that song? Uh, well, Merle Haggard did. I, I, I've only heard the Dylan version. I haven't heard the Merle Haggard version. Okay, but he wrote it, right? But Dylan sang it? Yeah. Okay. All right, so, okay, aside from the information about that song, but thank you for revealing that. Okay. Uh, the, the, thing, the thing is, uh, we must remember we need to fall on the rock, okay? We need to fall on him rather than the rock coming down. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. But if he has to humble us, it's going to hurt, okay? We need to humble ourselves, okay? So, uh, back to this. Sorry, correction. Yes. First Corinthians chapter 10. What does it say? And the and the and they all drank the same spiritual drink, for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them, and the rock was Messiah. Okay, the rock was Messiah. It opened up and provided water for them in the in the wilderness. By the way, there's uh, there was a rock at the mountain at Mount uh, Sinai. It's still there. Okay, in Saudi Arabia, that rock that split. You can see it online. Just type in the real Mount Sinai in YouTube or online and it'll show you a picture of the actual rock that was that still split and people have actually gone there to mount sinai in saudi arabia the one in, in um uh in southern israel actually not even southern israel it was considered a part of egypt okay the sinai peninsula that catherine the mother of the the i could say the witch mother of constantine Okay, declared that that was the site of Mount Sinai. Uh, there you go, someone put it up there. But that's, that's the rock. They went into the rock and they found the inside there, you can see the pressure where the water pushed up, come out. And there's a softened area of rock. Now you might say, well, how would that be intact? Because they only get a half, of range, a inch, a half an inch of rain every 10 years. So everything's been kept intact. Okay, now, now okay, you can go back. I don't want to, you know. Thank you. That was good. Okay. Huh? That was good. Yeah, that was cool. Okay. Well, what I'm saying is, is that the rock was Yeshua. Okay. And they all drank from it. But there was another rock that traveled with them. There was a rock that stayed at Mount Sinai as a testimony. But there was a rock that traveled with them and it produced water and that was Messiah. He is the hidden rock out of the rock. He is the rock on which we stand. You know, he is... That's what the, you know, the, the scripture said, okay? Uh, we gotta put, you know, the, it says, upon this rock I will build my congregation, my kahal, okay? Messiah is the rock. He always was a rock and he always is the rock and he is the rock, the rock of our salvation. He is my rock. <laughs> he is my rock. That's how we roll. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, uh, you know, I, I just want you guys to see this, okay? 
that it's the Father and the Son, and it's a witness. Okay, it's it's there to witness. And he is making this promise that sits vows in front of a rock that he anointed. Because it was a type and shadow of Messiah. Talking to the Messiah. So we are making a promise to Messiah, to Yeshua. Okay, now, um, I wanted to do a little bit of a study here. On, on uh, It's on the bottom of page 5 on your notes. I noticed something. The word for stand is matzava. Uh, it matzava, sorry, matzava, and it means uh, it, it also means a stump or a pillar, something that stands. And the root word natsav is to establish or to stand. Okay. Now, I noticed that it it looked a lot like the word mitzvot. Now, mitzvot is a mem, a tzadi, a, a vav, and a hey. Now the word matzave, matzave, I'm sorry, matzeva, is a mem, tzadi, a bet, and a hey. Now I know you guys might not think anything of the Hebrew, and you know you might not understand the Hebrew, but every letter is it, it preaches to us. Okay, so the word for stand. And the word for mitzvot, which is instructions, it's the same word we have for law today. Uh, it's, it's actually the difference between these two. There's one letter. To take a stand is the letter, is the letter bet. Now, bet is, the word, is a letter that means a house. It means the house of God. Okay, the letter literally means a house of God. Okay, while the Vav in the, uh, in, I'm sorry, yeah, the Vav in, um, mitzvah. yeah, in mitzvah, in mitzvah, in mitzvah, in mitzvah, in mitzvah, yeah, it, I'm trying to, now here we go, okay, it represents, it's in the notes, it means the joining together, it also is a, is a letter that means man, okay, and it's a joining together, being bound to, okay, so, so Messiah is the one who joins us together. Mm -hmm. Okay, and since this one letter is a difference, he joins us together, and we take a stand with him. It means that we are in his house. We are living in his house. That's the word to stand for the Lord. We are living in his house. But also, if we just had mitzvot or mitzvah, it means that we are doing his instruction. Just one letter, and we're doing his instruction. So there's a connection. There's a connection. God wants us to be following his instructions in his house. <coughs> okay, listen, when you're growing up, do you follow your own instructions, or do you follow the instructions of your father who set the rules over the house, or your mother your father and your mother who set the rules of your house. You follow their instructions, okay, as a child. And then you grow up, grow up, you have your own home, and you set the instructions there, okay, and your children follow them. Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We follow the instructions, the, the precepts, the, the commandments, whatever you call it, it's the instructions of the Lord in his house. We are in his his house, and we take a stand for him, okay, with him by standing and listen to him, listening to him and following his word. That's what he wants. That's we are in his house. See, God always wanted a family. Okay, the the father is is represented in he's he's the one that is the head of the household. The mother is over the house too. That is represented in the Holy Spirit. We have the Father representing the Father. The Mother represents the Holy Spirit. Because, by the way, Ruach HaKodesh is, is, is feminine. It's feminine. Really, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, when we say He, we're really doing the Ruach HaKodesh as a service. It's, it's feminine. 
Okay, then we have we have the son, Yeshua. So God is a family man. Every Hebrew word, most of them, comes down to three letters. It's like a family, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. So this is the family of God. We are a part of a family. In Hebrew, the word is mishpacha. You're a part of a mishpacha. Okay. So, you know, I just you need to understand that. That you're never alone. Even if your mother and father forsake you, God will take up your cause. Because God is your mother and he's your father. Okay? And I mean, there's, there's a lot we can talk about. It. But taking a stand means that I am going to stay in God's house and follow his instructions. There is no other way. Okay? There, if you, listen, if you want peace, okay, think about it like this. Your father and your mother know what you were created for. They were given insight at your birth. And in, in ancient times, they would name their child after an insight that they were given about their children. Okay? God and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, our Father and the Holy Spirit knows what we were created for, what we were supposed to do, that maximizes what we were created for in, the, in heaven in the first place, and we came to earth. We have come to complete a mission. And our instruction booklet, he didn't leave us without instructions. I don't know about you, but if I'm supposed to put something together from nothing, I need instructions. A few weeks ago, I was trying to, we went over to try to help Dean fix something with the sink uh, underneath, and and the, the instructions got torn, <laughs> and I, I couldn't follow them, and I will not do it if I don't have the instructions. Because I don't know anything. I need the instructions. I don't know about you. Maybe some of you might think, oh, I don't have to put this all together. Now, I, I appreciate if you've done it before because you already know how to do it, and that's okay. All right, but what I'm saying is that we need the instructions. Those are our instructions for righteousness on how to live. Okay, so let's stay in the house. Let's find our place, our stand. Let's Because we're going to find our purpose. Yes. I heard it cost me over forty. <laughs> Thank you, God. Because I ripped the instructions, it cost me two hundred and forty bucks. Oh, very good. <laughs> Didn't follow the instructions. Because he had to get it fixed by someone because it wouldn't work after he tried to put it together. Okay, so <laughs> so there, there's your proof. Nothing's gonna work if you don't follow the instructions. And we're never gonna find our perfect place that God created us to be in. Yes. I have a question. Okay. You said God always wanted a family. Right. Why us? Because there was already angels up there. Because angels are more like his servants. He wants a people that he gave free, he gave free will to, to worship him and adore him. He created us for that. And also to be a bride for his son. But, 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 but the angels sort of had free will because we've got fallen well, angels. Yeah, they do. They do, but it's not the same. It's like they were created only to serve. They can't create like him. They were not made in his image and likeness. We were. He wanted us to be his family. We were made in his image and likeness. Okay? Now, that, that's something really special. We have a creative ability that came from the, the creator. Do you know when a man and a woman get together, they and they create a baby, that that's like the creation of the earth. That's a little insight into our, our class, which I forgot to announce. We're going to have a class on Genesis beginning Sunday at 2 to 3.30. That's tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, tomorrow. They start tomorrow. Okay, at, at our house. Now, now here, here's the thing. You know, in the creation, God has already laid out. When he created everything, it was like a womb. He, he, he made a womb. And in that womb, he, he created everything, the whole creation. He is full of light, and he created this dark space, and he created this creation there. It's like a baby. It's like a man and a woman creating a baby. What? Okay, so that's all I'm going to share about that. We're going to go into detail about that tomorrow. Okay. But basically, the whole creation is patterned like that. We can do that. He gave us, he said, be fruitful and multiply. Okay? This is this is interaction. It, it's 
It's about God's giving to us and what we do with what he gives to us. Okay, so God, God wants us to respond to him. It's not good enough to receive from him. Everybody says, can I have this? Can I have that? But how many want to give back to him? Okay, here, here's a little amazing thing to learn. God doesn't give to us just for us to be selfish with. Mm -hmm. He gives to us to give back. It's an interactive thing. Okay, he's, remember Yeshua talked about the talents? He gives one person one talent, another person five talents, another person ten talents. I'm probably not quoting this right, but basically, at the end, what they did with those talents is what they're going to receive back. In other words, if if they were good with the talents, they get double back, or they get it back double. Okay, and it's like what we do with what we've been given. Faith without works is dead in James chapter one. Okay, so with that, with just faith, there's there's no works. We receive faith, but we don't do anything with it. That what's that? That's uselessness. That's according to to James, it's deceitfulness to just hear. And not be a doer. A doer responds to what they hear. Okay, does something with it. What are we doing with what God's given to us? That's what I'm always questioning myself. And all of us need to question ourselves. If we are just speaking something and not doing it, it's useless. It's worthless. Because God has called us to do something with what He gives us. Um, so, you know. So uh, let's look at chapter 20. I'm going to read a couple more verses and we'll finish with that. Uh, 29, 1 to 14. And Yadokov went on his journey and came to the land of the sons of the east. He looked and he saw a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep were lying there besides it, and from it that well they watered the flocks. Now the stone on the mouth of the well was large. Here we go, it's a stone again. The stones, I call this is the portion of the stones. Okay, when all the, when all the flocks were gathered there, there, they would then roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep and put the stone back on its place on the mouth of the well. Now it says that they would do that. That means they needed more than one. This is a very heavy stone, yes? That's the tomb. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I guess I understand. He's talking about the tomb, yeah. the stone that was over the tomb and how it rolled away. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and when, they rolled away, when they rolled away the rock, the Messiah came out. He's the living water. Water. Oh, okay. the that's very good, Josh. Yeah. That's good. I never saw it like that. That's very good. That's very good. Thank you. Okay, do you all see that? Yeah, but here's, here's the stone. Okay, the stone is over the well. Okay, and... Uh, now, uh, verse 3, when all the flocks were gathered there, they would then roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep and put the stone back in the place on the mouth of the well. Yaakov said to them, my brothers, where are you from? And they said, we are from Haran. Haran. And he said to them, do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, we know him. And he said to them, it, it, is it well with him? And they said, it is well. And here's Rachel, his daughter, coming with the, the sheep. And he said, Behold, it is still a high day. It is not time for the livestock to be gathered. Water the sheep and go pasture them. And, but they said, We cannot until the flocks are gathered. In other words, he's coming out of nowhere and he's telling them how to do their business. You know why he, he felt like he could tell them? Because he was a shepherd before. So he knew how to shepherd the sheep. But they did things differently where they were at. So he's like telling them, commanding them, you know, taking charge. Okay, it says, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered, and they roll the stone from the mouth of the well when we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And when Yaakov saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, Yaakov went up and rolled the stone from the mouth of the well and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother, he was like, ah! <laughs> it took a bunch of men to roll a stone before, but he did it all by himself. 
I think he was just very happy at seeing Rachel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so and Yaakov kissed Rachel and lifted his voice and wept. He was like fell in love with her instantly. Yaakov told Rachel that he was a relative of his father and that that he was Rivka's son, Rebecca's son, and she ran and told her father. So when Lavan heard the news of Yaakov, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Then he related to Lavan all these things. And Lavan said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him a month. Okay. So here is the stone. Okay. This is a heavy stone. And he moved the stone. It calls up his love. His love for Rachel. He, he didn't even know her yet, but he loved her. Okay, well, think about this. God, he says, while we were still sinners, he came and he died for us. His love for us was so great, is so great, that he went through all sorts of suffering. For strangers that they didn't know him, he didn't know them, he, he was the one just, while he was on the cross, he just didn't forgive them, they know not what they do. You know, and yet he loved them. While we were sinners, he loved us. So it's like, this is like what Yaakov did for, for Raquel is symbolic of what God feels, how God feels about us. He weeps for us. He loves us. And he'll move everything out of the way. Any block, any mountain, any trouble, he'll move it out of the way for us. Because that's his love for us. He said, if you would only believe, you could say to this mountain, move from there to there, and it will. He wasn't, obviously, you know, he didn't want us to be into, like, moving whole mountains. Obviously, he was telling us that there's nothing impossible. If you would just believe, I'll move it out of the way for you. Okay? No matter what problem, no matter how big it is for you, he will move it out of the way for you. Okay? So, uh, he was all caught up in her, in her beauty in, in the rest of this chapter, and and then we get into this whole thing. Um, go to page seven of your notes, and I'm just going to briefly go over this. He served seven years for Rachel. He got Leah. Now, it says it says in the scriptures that when you saw her, she had weak eyes. Now I have come to learn that the Jews say she was ugly. Okay, Leah. But actually, she wasn't ugly. She was weeping all the time. There's lots of opinions on why Leah was weeping all the time. That she was never happy. She was in a house of idolaters. And she knew the God of Israel. And she was weeping because of just being vexed in her spirit at being among people that rejected the only God that she had a relationship with. That's, that's one opinion. And that's why she was sad all the time. But I guess when it, when you're sad all the time, it affects your eyes, and therefore she wasn't as attractive, I guess, as, as Rachel was. Okay, so, uh, however, there was a brokenness about Leah, but Rachel was an idol worshiper. Okay. Rachel, the mother of Joseph and the mother of Benjamin, was an idol worshiper. Now, maybe she repented at the end, but she loved idols. And when they left, she she took her idols with, her father's idols. She stole it. She stole it. And then when her uh, father caught up with her and resolved everything with Yaakov, you know, which we'll you know, read about in a little bit. I'm not sure we'll get to that. But the, the thing is, it it's... Um, it ends up that Jacob says, I don't know about your gods. I don't know anything about your gods. Whoever it's with, may they die. Basically, he cursed Rachel without knowing it, because Rachel was the one who had the idols. Okay, so anyhow, so they, I, I want to clarify something. Okay, seven years, the, the Jews are still debating this, okay? Seven years he served to get to get Leah, and actually he wasn't aiming to get Leah, he was trying to get Rachel, but, but you know, he was deceived by Levan, okay, the father, okay. So 
so here, here's, here's what happens, okay? He says, okay, fine. Give Leah her wedding week, okay? And then after that, and that's seven days, okay? And after that, I will give you Rachel. Okay, so he gets Rachel, but he has to wait seven days, make sure that she has a very happy seven days, Leah and the wedding chupa, you know, and then and then then after the wedding week she gets he, he gets Rachel. And then he has to serve seven years for Rachel. Even though he has her, he made a promise to serve seven years for Rachel. So there's fourteen years and then they they were having all the children. All the children of, of Israel got was was getting born, and uh, and then you know uh, so it's also it says that he served six years for the sake of the flocks. So it's a total of twenty years, and then he leaves. Now I see this as Jacob is not at home; he's in the nations. Well, today Israel. It, there's a nation, but almost 2,000 years they didn't have a place. It's the same thing. Israel is in the nations for, for almost 2,000 years and then comes back. It's the same thing. It, it was always foretold. God is always telling the same story over and over again. So, when they were once in the nations, and just as Jacob was in the nations before he came back 20 years, it was time to come home. Well, Israel had to have a place. So, in 1948, there was a place that they could go back home. In 1967, it enlarged even more when they got Jerusalem back. So this is this is all foretelling the future. But we're scattered and we come back now. We're going to get into it next week. We're going to talk about Esau, um, Rome. Rome always gets in the way of the returning back of the children of Israel. Rome. The systems of Rome, the teachings of Rome, which prevail in the church. Not, not, not every teaching is in Rome, but most of the, many of the teachings in the church, in the religious church, is from Rome. And it's getting in the way of understanding God's purpose for Israel. Because God's purpose for Israel, God promised, yes, they would be scattered, but I will bring them back. It even says that in, in Hosea, it says, that, that, uh, actually, let me go to Hosea. Hosea chapter 6. Hosea 6 says, Come, let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. He will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day. Okay, so after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. Okay, so two days, two is always has to do with the nations. Come back. Did you know that when the ark would travel, when Israel would go to war and the ark would travel, it would always be two, I think it was 20 cubits, no more than that. I think it was like 200 or 2,000 cubits. I know it was one of those two. Ahead of the people. But it was always two because the ark goes first and, and the ark represents the presence of the Lord. Okay, And the people, the, the, God would do the battle for them. The priests would carry the ark. It was a type and shadow of the presence of the Lord. And the people would follow. There were two, I think it was 200 cubits ahead of, and listen, I, I can't remember where, if it was 2,000 or 200, okay, but I remember it was it, be, it was two. They were always ahead, and, and it has to do with the 2,000 years separation, okay? One of these days, soon, all of Israel is going to look upon him whom they had pierced. It's going to be 2,000 years since the Messiah came, okay? So they're going to look upon him again. They're going to have, they're going to be back together with the ark. The ark represents Messiah. So they're going to be reunited with him. Okay, so there's always these two that separate. Okay, so uh, why am I sharing all this? You know, he really had two wives, Rachel and Leah. And he was building up the house of Israel. 
Okay. Now, I have here on your notes, for your own time, uh, a prophecy. The who was born to who, in the order of the sons. And if you look at Leah, God saw Leah's heart. So in her first seven children is a prophecy. Is a prophecy of the whole 6,000 years of man and then the day of the Lord. Okay? And, and there's a prophecy in there. Uh, the seventh child she had was a, a girl, Dina, which means judge. The kingdom, the coming of the kingdom. Okay? But these are also the orders of the sons. Okay? Twelve sons. Okay? And there's a prophecy in each wife and there's a prophecy in the whole. Okay, but it would take another two hours to go through that. So I just want you to, this is for your research. Listen, I, I gave, give you the notes. Please continue the research. I can't share everything with, with you because this is a lot. It's a lot to take in. But what I want you to get out of all this is that he is our rock. And that we make a promise to him. And we make a vow to him. When you say yes to Messiah, okay, that means you are binding yourself to him. And if you break it, there's going to be repercussions to it. Okay, but he is faithful on his part. Listen, look at Israel. Look at all that we've done. The Jews are scattered in, in all the nations because they did not follow God. Well, guess what? He's still going to have faith. He's still going to be faithful to Israel in the end. Okay, you see what I mean? And for all that they've done, he's going to be faithful to them. He is faithful to us, even when we're unfaithful. The goal is let's be faithful to the Lord. Let's be faithful to our own promises, our own vows. Do you know that God has a promise? A husband is supposed to promise three things to their wife. Okay, they're supposed to promise food, clothing, and intimacy. Okay, that's a promise. Okay, well, when God gave us the Torah, that's from the Torah. That's from the, the five books of Moses, okay? He has given us a promise that we are married, we are betrothed to Messiah, though he is guaranteed to give us clothes, he guarantees to give us food, and he guarantees to give us intimacy, but we have to pursue him for that. We have to be in agreement to be intimate with one another. Okay, I'm telling you this. Because I don't know what's going to happen in the world. I don't know what's going to happen in this country over the next weeks, over the next months. I don't know if all hell's going to break loose. And suddenly you won't be able to find food in the stores. I'm not prophesying that. I'm just telling you that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But if we know what his word says, that he guarantees food and clothing and intimacy... That's a guarantee. God is faithful to his word. Okay, and, and we said, yes, Lord. And we say, yes, Lord. That means that you need to keep your word. He's going to keep his word. And I'll tell you something. When, when these two work together, we keep our word and he keeps his word, there's going to be such a blessing. And it doesn't matter if you can't get food. If there's no food on your table for your children, God will make it happen. Because his word says it. All you have to do is just tell him. In faith, believe and say, hey, Lord, didn't you say in your word you guarantee us food, clothing, and intimacy? You'll find yourself food on the table when it's impossible. Because he's the God of the impossible. But we have to trust the Lord. Now they do that in other nations and they see blessings. Because they're and they're persecuted. They're under great distress. But we have so much here in America and in the US. You can go to any store, you can even get cheap food, and that'll meet your needs for the day. But you know what? We still have to rely on the Lord. You know what? It's, it's like, well, let's do it now, before it does get bad. If it's going to get bad. Yes? Uh, at the beginning of the service, uh, when, the, when the leaders were on, Johnny uh, said, we take off our shoes because we're standing on holy ground. I called it a holy ground from the beginning to now. For every word spoken here, 
has been my greatest enemy, and I have given you the understanding. You are on holy ground in the kingdom of God. You are on holy ground when you hear the word of God. Think about it. When Jacob made this promise, he was on holy ground. He was at the place, at that special place. When, when Abraham heard the call of God, and Moses, when he heard the call of God, was on holy ground. God told him to take his shoes off his feet. Okay? We are all walking with God in, in a very holy way. Holy isn't like a supernatural word. It just means you're not like anybody else. You're not trying to be like the world. You are separated. You're peculiar. If you're not peculiar and you look the same as everybody else, then I would just I would just like say, hey, I gotta fix my life. I want to be strange. I want people to say God is with me and that the unusual is happening in my life. Because if it's the usual, I don't want the usual. I don't want the dead religion. I call it the zombie religion. The walking dead. <laughs> That's what it is if we're not doing anything with our faith. It's we're all like the walking dead. I don't want to be the walking dead. I'd rather not have, you know, it just be between me, Christina, and the Lord. We're doing this for the Lord. We're all supposed to be doing this for the Lord. Learning about him, walking with him, having a relationship with him. Uh, I want I want to see where everybody is moving in a gift, in a word of knowledge, in a in a, a prophecy, in a tongue, in a translation. I want to see that happen. That belongs to us. You should have said that belongs to us in Ephesians. That's what the scriptures say. In Ephesians, it said that belongs to us. And it's been stolen. It's been stolen by the ecumenical church, the religious church that has cut off the spirit of God. Okay? It's like God is going to only operate in the spirit. And I pray that every one of those religious churches just falls to nothing or repents. Because we, we need a, a, the body, the people in the world need to see how real God is. And Yeshua said in John 17 that your love for one another, that you are one. May they be one as we are one so that the world could know that I was sent. That's what Yeshua prayed at the very end. I want the world to see that he is here. I want, I want in each of our lives and all of us together. You know, when we, do you know in ancient times, actually in the time of the book of Acts, they came together and everybody had a word of knowledge. Everybody had a tongue. Everybody had a translation. Everybody thought they were crazy because everybody was doing stuff. And they, Paul had to correct them and put them in order and tell them, no, 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 one person at a time. Okay, <laughs> don't do it all at once. Okay, if there's a tongue, let there be a translation. He was trying to put the church in order because everybody was functioning. You know what? I would love for, for that kind of disorder here because uh, then out of that can come order where everybody is moving. We all have something to give. We don't just receive. We're, we have something to give. We have to open ourselves up. You know, everybody is a leader. There are no followers. Okay, we're we're not supposed to be like, you know, oh, and I got a nice pew seat. You know, the further back I sit, the better. No one notices. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about that. I had at the beginning. I had this thought that everybody should be up front. Okay, listen. When we're at the at the wedding uh, with with the Messiah. Okay, let me tell you something. Do you do you all think? That the best place to be is going to be right next to Messiah. Okay. Yeah and no. But I probably won't be. Okay, because if he says that take the last place and I will move you up, then I think that the true humble people will be all fighting for the last spot, the furthest spot, because they get to be with the Lord by God's kingdom standard. Humility is the way. You know. So like I. I might take like the last spot. Not that I don't want to be with the Lord. I mean, I want to be with the Lord. But in order to be with the Lord, you have to take the last spot. My personal view of the wedding supper is this. It's musical chairs. It's always moving. Okay, in other words, the chairs are always like moving. And suddenly, one moment you're talking to Isaiah. And the next moment you're talking to Jeremiah. And the next moment you're talking to Yeshua. And the next moment you're talking. It's like that. It's like they're always moving. And it's like, 
it's never going to be like you stick in the same place or that you get the last place and no one pays any mind to you. And I don't care how great you are or how small you are. Every one of us is important to the Lord. He loves every one of us. And as much as you think, oh, what was your life like, Isaiah? And he's all after or before I was sawed in half. You know, you know, and things like that. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like uh, they're gonna want to know about us. What was it like at the end? Tell me. I, I saw it. I saw the end, but I, I didn't get a chance to live it. It's just the prophets long to see the things that we see. So you might think, oh, well, what are we? No, we are the ones that get to see the end that all the prophets prophesied. Okay, so just keep that in mind, okay? But hang on to the rock. Stay close to the Eden. Okay, he is the one. You made a promise. Keep your promise. God has a promise to you. And I, and I, these are, I remind you of this because I, I don't know. I, I get the feeling, I don't know if it's just me or what it is, but the trouble is coming soon to test us, because I really believe he wants a bride ready. So something is coming that's going to test us here in the free country. We're going to be tested. And if you can learn this now, so you don't get caught up in the mayhem and the complaining and, the, and being upset and being freaked out, okay, then you, you know, you'll be able to stand when, when all hell breaks loose. You know, we'll be okay. Okay, because we'll be trusting in the Lord and he will move mountains for us. Yes, you might not be able to do a lot of things that you've done before, but you'll still be trusting in the Lord and he will lead you how to move, how to walk, what to do, what not to do. Okay, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge the Lord and he will make your path straight. Abba, I just thank you, Abba, for, for your Torah. I thank you, Lord, for, for what you've taught us through Yaakov what you teach us through the prophets, what you teach taught us through the patriarchs and the matriarchs, Abba. I thank you, Abba, for all this, Abba. And you know, I thank you, Lord, that you taught us, Lord, through their experiences that many times we don't even have to go through the stuff that they've gone through to learn because, because we're learning through them. Abba, according to your word, Lord, you gave all of your word, Lord, to teach us, to, to lead us, to in lessons of righteousness and learning your righteousness, Abba, and also learning about us. Lord, we're still trying to know ourselves, Abba. We're, we're learning about you, but Abba, even we want to learn more about you, we want to learn about ourselves, who we are in you. What is our purpose? What you created us to be? Abba, we want to find out who we are in you. As much as we want to find out who you are in us, we want to find out who we are in you. And I just ask that you'd help us to find to find that out in the name of Yeshua. And I, I also realize that we didn't do the blessing for the opening and the closing of the Torah, but that's okay. Oh yeah, let's do the closing blessing. Thank you. <coughs> you know what, Josh? Do you think you can? Uh, Lift up the Torah. Yeah. Over the Zohar. You want to do it with us? We haven't done that yet since we've been here. Okay. So let's do the um, the Zohar and then we'll do the Zohar. The Chachba, the Chachba, yeah. The Chachba is called the lifting up of the word. You don't have to, we don't have to open it. We'll just lift it up like that. And then in the future when we start reading from it, we'll do it. And then just lift it up. The Zoha Torah, Asher Samoshe, Livre Israel, the other night, the Yad Moshe. Everybody point to the Torah. And this is the Torah that Moshe placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moshe's hand. Okay. <coughs> Huh? Yeah, let's do the closing blessing. We don't follow exact religious liturgical method because I want to follow the Spirit. 
Okay, so let's just follow the spirit. And uh, there's some Jews who might not like that. I don't care. <laughs> we, we, we're not here to please you and Jews. We're here to please God. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. There you go, keep going. You're yeah. doing pretty good. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think you may have been right there. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Natan Lanu Hatzah Elohim Bechai Amen. Okay, go down a little bit. We did the wrong one. No. Okay. That's it. That's it. Now keep going. We're going to have to, I'll have to give you the page next time. Now keep going. Uh, keep going. Right, no, that's not I've done it. Yeah. Okay, eventually we'll get there sometime in this life, right? <laughs> we keep, well, that was the Bill Press a lot. Keep going. That's Torah closing. Almost there. <laughs> All right, there we go. Stop. Stop. Okay. All right, so blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth and planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Let me uh, read you the ironic benediction. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of our Lord Shalom. Our Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Word of God, the soon coming King, in the name of Yeshua. Yeah, wait, wait, one more thing. Oh, Before we do the bread and the wine. Do you want to do the bread and the wine? Okay, let's do the bread.